nine minutes left, so that was my next phase. Uh, you have a website, and the website is? The website is, uh, well, just put Cult Movies Press into a search engine, and you'll find it. Cult Movies Press. Frank Delastrito, you can write him. Great guy. He's on here every week. And now we're going to talk about his, what is one of your favorite Bela movies, right? Well, I would say it was my favorite. <coughs> no, one of, one of, one of. <laughs> This is this is a lovable. It, it may be lousy, but it's lovable. It's uh, it was thrown together to take advantage of a lot of things. Uh, mainly, uh, Sammy Petrillo did a dynamite uh, imitation of Jerry Lewis, and Jerry Lewis is at his peak at about this time. So, Sammy Petrillo is in, in everything but but fact is Jerry Lewis in this movie. And in fact, I've had a lot of people who are not not casual. Uh, movie viewers say to me, talk to me about the movie that Bela Lugosi made with Jerry Lewis. So, and I, I always say, well, you know, that wasn't really Jerry Lewis. And, uh, yeah, it had to be him. Well, it, it almost was him, but Sammy Petrillo looked like, acted like, could, could imitate him down to a T. And the other fellow was like uh, Dean Martin, right? Yeah, he was He was the Dean Martin standing, but I mean, no one would ever miss, you know, he had a Dean Martinish qualities, but no one would ever mistake him for Dean Martin. One thing I, I got looked. I was watching this movie today to, in prep for the show. Is how much taller Bela Lugosi is than either one of them. They, neither one of them could have been much above five six. They, uh, he just towers over them. Let me ask this before we go into the movie review. Uh, Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein comes out. Yeah. Mother Riley meets the vampire was a takeoff on Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, right? Uh, it was a rip off, but yep. Okay, and then you got the Brooklyn Gorilla, which is really kind of like a pseudo Lewis, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis um, meet the Brooklyn Gorilla with Bela, right? Yep. I mean, there you go. So you got the three comedy teams there. Well, two and a half. Well, you, and you have more than that. I mean, Martin Lewis made their own scary comedy called Scared Stiff. I didn't know that. Uh, you had the Bowery Boys Beat the Monsters came out about this time. Uh, uh, well, basically, you know, scary comedies were in because of the success of Abbott and Costello, meet Frankenstein, uh, among other movies. But uh, Abbott and Costello were making it with Meet the Monsters all the time in this period. So scary comedies were in, and this was just this was just one more. Of them. And um, so this movie is, now Bela Lugosi comes back from Britain in uh, December 1951, and he is basically a tired old man. He's 70 now, and again, he's an old 70. And he's looking for work, and about all he finds in the first half of 1952 is nine days' work in this movie, Bela Lugosi Meets a Brooklyn Gorilla, starring him and Sammy Petrillo. And I have to say, the leading lady is uh, one of those one-name actresses, Charlita. She's exotic, she's beautiful, and she is from Lowell, Massachusetts. Whoa! And I, and I was shocked when I looked that up. I thought she was going to be from... Mexico or further south than that, but she was, she, she's one of yours. So uh, is she still alive? No, no, she died. She died quite a while back. She did. I think she died at seventy-five. I forget the year, but she was so so. She was probably thirty-ish in this movie. So she probably died in the nineteen nineties. But uh, what a shame! We'll have to you know, track down her kids and maybe have them on. Maybe I go. Well, she died in California. I don't know when she left Lowell. Oh, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's any trace of the family there, but um, but you can look into it. I mean, if you look up her up on the uh, International Movie D Database, you'll get her real name and see if there's anybody of that name left in Lowell that want to talk wants to talk to you. That'd be great. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this is a you know again this is not a good movie. The jokes. It, the jokes are funniest when they're the corniest. You know, when they try to be when they try to be subtly funny, they they don't do well. But when uh, there's this one this one scene when Sammy Petrillo is just intentionally telling one bad joke after another, and it gets funnier and funnier as he does it. Um, there's a dining there's a, a scene, there's a dining scene in this movie, and apparently Bela Lugosi had never had papaya before, so even though he was letter perfect in his roles most of the time. The legend says he kept muffing the scene because he wanted to get more papaya out of the producer. That's funny. Uh, uh, this was, again, this is filmed in nine days in L.A. It was shot by William Bodine, who, was, who had the nickname One Shot Bodine because he could make a movie so fast. And he had been doing this for a long time, making, making pretty low-budget movies. And you would think his career was winding down, but then all of a sudden... 
television comes along, which needs people that can make a movie in five days. That's what television is. And he had a long career after this movie, uh, basically doing television work. Uh, he did a lot of episodes of Lassie. He did a lot of work for the Disney television show, but he did a lot of work on on a whole bunch of series. Because uh, he, you know, he came into television with 20 years' experience in making a movie in a week or two. Just to digress a little, I was watching The Rifleman the other night, and it, it seemed to say Sam Peckinpah. Sam Peckinpah directing Rifleman. I, I yeah, well, Sam, uh, well. You know, I, 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 can, I don't know a lot about Peck and Paul, but I'm not surprised because he, I think he did start in television. So, the, and then he, yeah, that's the other side of the coin. Yeah, yeah, well, in 1950s and 60s, television caught a lot of Hollywood veterans on the, at the tail end of their careers, but then it caught a lot of uh, future filmmakers at the beginning of theirs. Wow. And, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg always says that he uh, that his years in epi what he calls episodic television, that is basically filming TV episodes, were the most the best learning experience of his life. Because you had to learn to think on your feet because you didn't have much time. And, um, and, of course, that's what William Bodine had been doing for quite a while. Uh, what, let's see, what else about this movie? This movie is made by Jack Roder. Jack Roder owns some theaters in the Detroit area and decided to get into the distribution end. And those are the people that worked with him generally speak of him well, but they say there was no one in the business who knew less about the actual making of a movie than Jack Broder, who made these movies. He would, uh, you know, he would basically trust his subordinates, and he didn't want to get into the details of movie making. Interesting. Well, we got two minutes left. Uh, the movie is called Bela Lugosi Meets a Brooklyn Gorilla. It's going to be broadcast tomorrow night here on WinCam at 9 p.m. Friday night. Frank Delastrito is our authority, our guest, our wonderful insight into these movies. And all right, well, hey, what, what do you think next movie, next week's movie might be? Uh, maybe we'll get to the Hercules. I will find out. I mean, but, I'd love you to do Hercules. I have such fond memories of that movie. I'd love to talk about it on the air with you. And one final question, Frank. Do you have another book coming out? Your third. I am, I'm always writing a new book, and I am writing a book, and this is, uh, you know, the books I've written are, uh, the, the book you have in your hand is a history book, basically, a, an intense history of 1951, Then the other book, the book that you've had for a few years, a quaint and curious volume, is, a, is largely a, in a, a, an analysis and discussion of what's behind the, uh, what's just beneath the surface of a lot of the, the classic horror movies, but I didn't grow up watching classics, I grew up watching schlock, so I'm writing a book now called... I saw what I saw when I saw it, which is a quote from Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Future schlock. It's, it's a lot of schlock. It's a, it's a Future schlock. Television. Alfred Toffler, you know? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. We're off the air, right? No, not yet, but um, I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. I mean, I grew up watching television reruns and old movies. The subtitle of the book is just that, growing up in the 1950s and 60s, watching TV reruns, old movies, and not much else. Well, we look forward to it, Frank. Happy Halloween.